I'm officially less than three weeks out from the Richmond Marathon, feeling good. Just finished my 20 miler last weekend, so two days ago, and I'm in taper, tapering, I'm tapering. I'm finally here. I've been waiting to be here. And one thing that has allowed me to make it through this entire training plan, which I feel like has been forever, it's been since like early summer, is being able to fuel correctly and that's one thing that I have talked about a lot because I think it makes a really big difference. So let me backtrack a little bit and then I'll talk about my fuel strategy for this marathon. I am not a nutritionist or a dietitian, but I do believe that you have to have a good fuel strategy and a good fuel fueling plan if you want to hit your goals for any race. So let's rewind three years ago. I ran my first half marathon. Now, I did train for one the year before, but I got injured so I couldn't run it. So my first half marathon. Now, I was new into this longer distance um, world, so I didn't necessarily, I saw myself as a runner, but I didn't see myself as someone who needed to fuel because I didn't see myself as a fast runner or an elite, so in my head, I thought, no, those are just for like the fast runners or the elites. Like I'm over here with my no fuel, carrying no water or electrolytes, and I'm just going to eat a banana before my run and then do my run and come home and everything's fine. So the entire half marathon training, I didn't fuel. And during the race, I did not fuel at all. Now I hit a wall of believe it or not, I did hit a wall. Mile 10, I was done. I was about to call my boyfriend to come pick me up because I was, I was over that race. I was, I had no energy. I was on E. I had only trained up to 10 miles. So I learned my lesson the hard way to actually take fuel. So now we're into last year. I ran my second half marathon and I fueled with one pack of chews that I didn't even enjoy. I think I took them at mile 10. So we're an hour and a half into this race and I took my pack of chews and I also ate a banana right before the run. So I had fueled once, I still hit this like mental and physical wall. It wasn't as bad, but I was still very much over that race because I felt like I was still running on E up until that time that I took the choose and then I was good until the end of the race. So now that I'm in marathon training and I've learned a lot, I've learned that if you're running long distance, if you're running more than an hour, you should be fueling even if it's an easy run. I've learned to take water and drink it and drink your electrolytes while you're running. And I've learned that you can still be like a recreational runner that takes fuel. I don't know, that was a very weird mindset for me, thinking I don't need to take fuel, like I'm not competing with the elites or anything like that. So I got over that hump. So with this training, things that I've learned is, one, drink your electrolytes before you run and during the run, especially if you're a salty sweater, because you can be sweating out all this salt and sodium and that can make you feel almost like you're lightheaded or dizzy even, but you're still running on E even if you're fueling correctly. So you have to do this balancing act of taking the right electrolytes and enough electrolytes plus taking in your carbs and your sugars. So when I fuel or when I hydrate, I use Gatorade Endurance or Noon. I've used Tailwind, which I really like. All of those have a good amount of sodium and some carbs. So I'm sipping on that during the first hour and the rest of the race. But because I'm sipping on it during the first hour, I don't take any fuel, gel, chews or anything like that until I'm at the 60 minute mark. I have found that using the schedule of time versus distance works best for me because my runs, you know, sometimes if I'm doing a 10 mile run, I might have a speed workout in there. But if I'm doing, you know, a 16 mile run, 20 mile run, I'm running at a lot easier of a pace. So I just found it's easier for me to just go off of time versus every three miles or four miles or five miles, which 
you have to do what works best for you, but just make sure whatever you've practiced with during your training, you stick with during the race. So now that you know, I only fuel if I'm running more than 60 minutes. So when I'm running this marathon at the 60 minute mark, I'm going to take a fuel and then every 30 ish minutes, I'm going to take another fuel gel chew. So that's going to look like having one at the one hour mark, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, hopefully finishing at 430. But if if it turns into me not finishing at 4.30, I will take another fuel at 4.30 if I have a little bit of time left. So that's another thing is packing extra fuel just in case because you never know what's going to happen on race day. In regards to the fuel that I'm taking, I have played around with this. I wish I played around with my fuel a little bit more when I was training. I was very much so sticking with the UK and Edge, which I do really like. If you have low blood sugar or anything with your glucose, I recommend trying that because it has really helped keep my glucose more like this versus a spike and then a drop, a spike and a drop, which a lot of fuels do for me. So I do recommend that you can edge. And then I also was only taking the Honey Stinger Waffle. I liked it. I thought it was great. I would alternate you can edge and then the honey singer waffle until my run was over just to variety too. But that honey singer waffle, I just had this realization like literally two weeks ago that this is really not that convenient to eat when I'm running at a faster pace. So I ditched the you or the honey singer waffle, got the honey singer chews, which I do like. I'm okay with chewing a little bit while I'm running, it's definitely less chewier than the waffle. And I think the Honey Singer Chews taste really good. They taste like fruit snacks. So it's a good variety when you're just using like gels because I don't know, it just, you just need, I need personally something besides just gel straight for like four and a half hours. So I will be alternating, adding in like one or two packs of the Honey Singer Chews and then I also recently got the Martin gel with the caffeine. Now, I have only tried this once, two days ago during my 20 miler. I don't love the texture of the gel, but I will say it has no flavor. So it is a lot easier to just like get down and swallow and you're good to go. It's also a small pack, so it's easier to carry and it has caffeine. So my plan, is to take that around the one and a half to two hour mark during my race. I took that around the two hour mark during the 20 miler. It worked really well. I was like, you know, all hyped up at the end of the run, which I was not expecting after 20 miles. So it definitely kicked in and it definitely works. So in regards to what I'm using during the race and even before the race, always the waffle with the peanut butter before the race, taking in electrolytes, maybe like an applesauce or banana right before I start running the race. And then getting into the actual race, I will be taking noon at all the um, water stops because noon is on the course with water. And then at the 60 minute mark, I will be taking a You Can Edge. An hour and a half, I'll be taking probably a You Can Edge. At two hours, I will be taking the caffeine, the Martin Gel Caffeine. At two and a half, I'll be taking a You Can Edge. At three, I'll be taking the Honey Singer Chews. Three and a half, a You Can Edge. Four, the Honey Singer Chews, just to switch things up. And then another You Can Edge. So I personally like to add in that variety. Again, you have to do what's best for you. If I could go back in time though, I do wish I tried and experimented more with different fuels and gels and chews because I just kind of stuck with what worked for me which is great, but then when I had this realization, like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I wanna eat a waffle and chew and run at the same time because it is a little bit chewier, so I do wish I tried more. I've heard a lot of great things about the Huma gel as well. I have not tried that yet. I'll try it after the race, but because I'm kind of in crunch time, I'm surprised that I even was able to try the Martin gel and like it and add that into my plan. So hopefully that gives you some insight now, 
Again, I'm always gonna carry one extra you can edge just in case, like if I need it. I don't think I'll need it, but you know, you never know what race day is gonna bring. And the last thing I would want is to feel lightheaded and dizzy because I'm and also starving during race day if things don't go as planned. So hopefully that gives you some insight and good luck with your race and your training. And let me know if you have any questions. I'll link everything below.